Hello friends, welcome to Insights ICANN Initiative. This is the week 7 weekly current affairs. So previous 6 weeks weekly current affairs issues we already included in the weekly current issues playlist. So you can access the last 6 weeks weekly current affairs videos and this is the 7th one. As I promise the PDF will be included but uh, sometimes the daily it may not be updated but the weekly current affairs PDF definitely it will be included in the video description. You can find the this particular videos PDF in the video description. Okay. So now let's see this particular video is related to in syllabus point of view it is related to prelims primarily. Then in this week week 7 we are going to discuss about these 7 topics. Okay. First let us map the these particular topics related to subjects. Bharat the mother of democracy portal it is related to Indian polity and government initiatives. Then we are going to discuss about NPCA, National Payment Corporation of India Economy, PM Daksh Yojana, it is related to government initiatives such as schemes. Then Umiyam Lake, it is related to geography, especially it is the this particular topic related to Meghalaya, where you know like and it is also related to SNT, okay, because here the artificial intelligence is using in this particular lake to reduce the pollution. National Carbon Registry Environment, UNDP, they came up with one special uh, website. Here we will discuss about the open software. What does it mean? We will discuss. Then Sanatan Dharma, you know that it is related to polity, where we are going to discuss about the controversies surrounding the Sanatana Dharma. Then finally, we will discuss about the mapping, IR, Morocco. So these are the seven topics we are going to cover in this particular video. So without any delay, first we will see the first topic. This first topic is going to be the one of the portal launched by government of India in the context of G20. This portal is going to give information about the democracy, how democracy evolved in India over the period of time from Indus Valley civilization till the present times. You know that democracy is very ancient topic. Democracy was supported by people like Socrates and because Socrates supported the democratic, democratic government, after this democratic government came into existence, due to some misunderstandings, the democratic government killed, I mean executed the Socrates. Because of that, Plato really hated the democratic government. You know that particular thing. In India, we follow the indirect democracy in may, very many various ways. Now tell me students, in India, where you will see the direct democracy? Give me an example where you will see the direct democracy in India. In which context? So now we will see what is the name of the portal? Bharat, the mother of democracy. This is the portal. This portal works under which ministry? Ministry of Culture. Who developed this portal? Portal developed by, this, you know, like Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts. This particular institution developed this portal. This organization also works under Ministry of Culture. In how many languages they are offering this portal? They are offering this portal in 16 languages. And the address of this portal is this one. And one more thing, this portal is going to reflect the evolution of democracy in India from Indus Valley Civilization till now. This portal is completely divided into five sections. These five sections included the five timelines. Indus Valley timeline, then Mahajanapadas, then Vijayanagara Empire, Mughal Empire too, till we implemented the constitution of India and from there onwards. These five sections divided. You know that Indus Valley Civilization, it was the, you know, like across the, it was urban civilization and it was spread across the Indus Valley and more or less during this time we know the usage of copper and bronze. Tell me students during the Indus Valley civilization do we know the usage of iron or not regarding the iron usage. Next Mahajanapadas 16 Mahajanapadas and from the 16 Mahajanapadas Magadha Empire came into existence. Then Vijayanagara Empire they are very popular for the cultural as well as architectural accomplishment. You know their capital Hampi is recognized by UNESCO as a world heritage site. That is about the first topic. Second is about the NPCA, National Payment Corporation of India. They came up with some new products. We are going to discuss about those new products. These new products are mainly concentrated on the technology such as QR code and the near field communications NFA, NFC. And we will discuss about how the UPA was created and what is the role of the RBI. And this UPA was created according to which law, okay, according to which act this was created. Now let's see NPCA. 
National Payment Corporation of India. They introduced some products and the main objective of these products is to make our economy more inclusive, more resilient and more sustainable digital payment network. Regarding the NPCI, this NPCI in India, it is an umbrella organization which regulates retail payments, retail payments and settlement systems in India. Okay, Payments are two types, retail payments and wholesale payments. This NPCI is regulated by RBI and the Indian Banks Association. In the Indian Banks Association, majorly 10 banks are behind the establishment of NPCA. And it was established according to two legislations. It operated by one was Payments and Settlement Systems Act 2007. The other legislation, it was established as a company. So it also regulated by the Indian Companies Act. It was amended in 2013. Indian Companies Act 2013. And this regulatory board, who controls the NPCA? NPCA controlled by a regulatory board which includes nominees from RBI as well as the 10 major banks which are present in the Indian Banks Association, IBA. They, know, they regulate this NPCI. And NPCA new products are number one, wild credit line. What does what it what it do? So it helps in the it helps in the pre-sanction credit credit loan, you know, like pre-sanction loan. In that aspects, it will be useful. Next, UPI Light X. It helps in the facilitation of the offline payment as well as the UPI tap and pay payments. So, it uses mainly the QR based technology as well as the near field communication technology. It uses mainly it is targeting towards the offline payments in terms of QR code as well as the near field communication. You know that NFC how it works when you tap your debit card on any you know, like payment system or any POS, point of sales mission, the transaction will be finished. Apart from these two products, the third one is about the Hello UPA. This is the UPA services based on the voice, through voice, such as, you know, like through telecom calls and through IoT devices, we can operate, we can initiate the payments. Initially, this uh, particular app can recognize Hindi as well as English. Later, other languages also will be added into this. Next, bill pay connect. It is about the conversational bill payments which can be made through nationalized number made available by Bharat Bill Pay. It is through a particular telephone line pay through, you know, like this payments can be made through telephone line, conversational bill payments. So that was the second topic. And the third topic is PM Dax Yojana. This main objective of this PM Dax Yojana is about skilling youth skilling women as well as skilling artisans by skilling them we can increase their employment employability opportunities so that overall economy can be helped out so now we'll see pm daksha the full form is about and who are the target groups we will discuss pm daksha during 21 22 2021 where it was launched till now 22 to 23 this pm daksha was able to train around 1,7156 beneficiaries have been trained. PM Daksh stands for Pradhan Mantri Dakshita Aur Kushalta Sampanna Hitgrahi. This is the name of this particular portal or scheme. It is completely the central sector scheme. I told you students, central sector scheme means 100% of the funding given by the union government. Whereas central sponsor scheme means certain amount of the money contributed by the center and rest of the money by the state. It may be the 90s to 10 or it may be the 60s to 40. It depends on whether the state is enjoying the special category status or not. This particular scheme was launched in 2020-2021. The scheme main intention is to impart skills and abilities of the targeted groups so that their employment employability options can be improved and overall economic development can be possible. Who are the targeted groups? Artisans and women and youth. These are the targeted groups. Next. And the age group of this targeted group, age bracket, 18 to 45 years of age. And there is no annual income limit for SC, I mean scheduled caste families, as well as the Safai Karmacharis to come under this training and get the training. Whereas to get this kind of training, for the OBC family, the annual income must be below 3 lakhs. And for the economically backward class families, the annual income must be below the 1 lakh. 
the nodal ministry which is coordinating this particular program is ministry of social justice and empowerment this ministry is coordinating this particular program next the fourth topic is about the meghalaya we are going to discuss about one lake in meghalaya here recently meghalaya government they are trying to use the artificial intelligence to reduce the pollution in this particular lake this particular lake is located near the east kasi hills now we will see what is that lake and that lake is feeding through which river before we discuss that let us see some of the prominent lakes across india they are vembanch lake kerala chilka lake odisha indira sagar lake madhya pradesh pulikot ap nagarjun sagar lake telangana vular jnk loktak manipur sada sarovar lake rajasthan pangyong lake ladakh you know like across the pangyong lake very china is often having some kind of disputes regarding the pangyong lake recently they built a bridge over the pangyong lake as well shiv sagar lake maharashtra these are few popular lake across india so regarding the umiyam lake now this umiyam lake present in meghalaya this umiyam lake where the meghalaya government is deploying the artificial intelligence techno robotic technology so that they would like to reduce the pollution near this particular lake remember it is not a natural lake it is an artificial lake this lake was formed while they are constructing the hydroelectric project actually that particular hydroelectric project was the first hydroelectric project in the northeast we will see what is the name of that hydroelectric project anyhow they are deploying the artificial intelligence to reduce the pollution this lake is also known as barpani lake and it is a lake present in the state of meghalaya it is bounded by east kasi hills and it is a artificial lake like i said earlier next history artificial lake means it formed due to the hydroelectricity project what is the name of that hydroelectricity project umiyam umtru hydroelectric power project it was the first of its kind of hydroelectric project in northeast this lake is mainly fed by a river umiyam this river umiyam main tributaries are umkar and umshwarapi okay are um, umwapi these are two tributaries which joins together and form this main river next topic is the fifth one national carbon register you know students in cop 21 every country they pledged that they are going to follow the intended nationally determined contributions okay what does it mean it means every country they want to keep a limit on carbon emissions so that they can easily reduce the greenhouse gas emissions so how to track this carbon emissions so obviously you require a particular portal here that portal is there designed by the UNDP and this is the open software that means every country they can adopt this software and they can do required modifications and they can track the this kind of carbon emissions and whether they are stick on to the this cop 21 targets or not okay let's see national carbon registries this particular portal is developed by UNDP United Nation Development Program this is mainly to manage what to manage the national data regarding the trading of carbon credits you know the students when a particular country is able to reduce significant amount of the carbon emissions they will get carbon credits they can sell that carbon credits to some other countries where they are emitting lot of carbon emissions so carbon em credits are nothing but it's an incentive program to a particular nation for promoting the more sustainable way of living this national carbon registry the software is accredited or labeled as digital public good any software or any digital product if it is developed for the public purpose then that is known as digital public good what is the meaning of open source code open source code means an open software which can be used by the respective nations or anyone open software and this registry is following the standards of UNDP World Bank UNFCCC and European Bank for Reconstruction and Development EBRD it is following the standards of all these organizations because these are the organizations either directly or indirectly related to the carbon trading system about the UNDP as this system or as this website is developed by UNDP let us go through some basic information regarding the UNDP UNDP is an international agency 
and which is associated with the UNO around 170 nations have membership what is the main objective of UNDP to eradicate the poverty and income inequalities and it also helps in nations to achieve their sustainable development targets or goals it works under main three focused areas they are sustainable development around 17 goals democratic governance and peace building and finally climate and disaster resilience around these three focused areas this particular organization works next topic sanatan dharma you know that you know that friends there was a controversy developed around sanatan dharma after the comments made by the udayanidhi stalin so here we are going to discuss about what is the sanatan dharma means which religion practices sanatan dharma and how the sanatan dharma concept was countered by the self respect movement who started the self respect movement and we will also discuss about the justice party and dmk and dmk main principles sanatana dharma first you have to understand sanatana dharma means eternal law or eternal dharma that means the dharma which was there forever sanatana dharma not only restricted to hindu religion it also practiced by other religions such as jainism as well as buddhism so sanatana dharma is prevalent in religions which believes in the afterbirth there are some other religions which don't believe in the afterbirth and they don't subscribe to the sanatana dharma ideology now let's see recently dmk leader udayanidhi stalin he made a comment that the sanatana dharma is against the social justice and it has to be eradicated sanatana dharma means is, is a sanskrit word it means eternal religion or eternal law it is practiced not only in the hindu religion but in other religions such as buddhism as well as jainism the sanatana dharma concept gained much popularity in fact we can see this as a counter to the socio religious movements when socio religious movements are trying to reform the hindu religion or trying to reform the religions and when some of the people who believed that old values in the religions are better compared to these socio religious movements so some people they decided to preserve their religious values or cultural values so to counter the socio religious movements they started these sanatana dharma movements and this was adopted by various organizations various sabhas okay, various movements they prescribed to the idea of sanatana dharma it was mainly seen as a to preserve the caste system to preserve the idol worship and to preserve the ancient values the sanatana dharma movements the sanatana dharma again countered by dravida munnetra kajagam dmk which is a offshoot of the self respect movement which was started by the ev ramaswami periyar self respect movement mainly it opposes the caste as well as religion it was a rationalist movement that means rationalism means what to apply our brain our minds and not following blindly anything or not entertaining the superstitions in 1939 38 justice party as well as the self respect movement they were they became much prominent together after that from justice party in 1944 anadurai separated and he established dmk dmk was majorly anti brahmin anti congress and anti aryan in fact they demanded for a separate dravidian country but of course the demand was not well i mean it did not go well with the people so it was not that much succeeded regarding the dravida nation and the seventh topic is regarding the morocco you know the students morocco which is sharing border with the atlantic ocean as well as the mediterranean ocean it was the only african country which sharing border with two nations and morocco is with atlas mountains and morocco located across the african as well as the european plates tectonic plates so that is the reason now morocco experienced very massive earthquake and unfortunately so many people lost their life still the death toll is increasing it is very unfortunate to hear okay now let's see regarding some of the information related to this particular earthquake morocco and the earthquake physiography also we will see powerful earthquake it struck the morocco morocco includes a popular mountains known as atlas mountains this atlas mountains area affected by this earthquake as well as morocco capital marrakesh was also affected by this earthquake 
earthquakes are very less in north africa and this morocco it present along the boundary of african as well as the eurasian tectonic plate in this map we have seen african plate as well as the eurasian plate whichever the areas present across the tectonic plates those areas are more vulnerable to the earthquake because in the tectonic plate boundaries this in the, the, in the near the plate boundaries the energy from the you know like earth crust it will come in the form of seismic waves of course that is nothing but earthquake you know that below the crust okay and above the mantle okay we have asthenosphere this in this asthenosphere obviously all these tectonic plates are floating when these tectonic plates are hitting against each other are sliding past one another then this kind of energy will come out of this tectonic plates that is materialized in the form of earthquakes okay morocco border by atlantic ocean mediterranean sea and morocco and spain they are separated by gibraltar strait in this map you will see gibraltar strait gibraltar strait separate the spain and morocco and gibraltar strait connects the mediterranean sea and atlantic ocean gibraltar is regulated by the uk it comes under the uk administration morocco is the only african country which is having the coastal exposure to both atlantic as well as the mediterranean sea regarding the earthquake the place where earthquake starts it is generally known as focus at the surface the same point is known as epicenter and from the focus earthquakes spread across in all the directions in the form of the seismic waves seismic waves will be recorded in the seismograph seismograph seismic wave seismograph focus epicenter okay next now we'll see the yesterday video question in which of the following groups are all the four countries are the members of the g20 which groups argentina mexico south africa and turkey all these are present in the g20 now we will see today's today's questions first question which one of the following is the best description of igis marco that was in news recently it is related to what next second question exercise varuna which was recently seen in news held between which two nations next question satkosia tiger reserve lies in which one of the following states in india in which state it is present next question lunar reconnaissance orbiter was launched by which one of the following so which space agency they, they launched this lunar reconnaissance orbiter and the last question is ctap which was recently seen in news is an initiative of so which organization initiated the ctap now as we reach to the end of this video we'll quickly recap what we discussed so this is the weekly current issues number 7 in this video we discussed about all these seven issues starting from bharat the mother of democracy portal to till the morocco earthquake and morocco map pointing and the earthquakes nature this is the detailed analysis regarding the weekly current issues